Hi class, welcome to the online session. We are going to talk about the histology of the respiratory system. And these are the slides that we have for these instructions. Okay, so let's start with the olfactory epithelium. Okay. So the olfactory epithelium would be located uh, in our in the nose, uh, in the nose, okay, and in the nasal sept. This would be the nasal septum. This one, okay, and the olfactory epithelium, as you can see in this portion, it would be uh, a specialized type of pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. So it would line the olfactory area. And when you are going to answer us pertaining to this particular slide to what is the lining epithelium present, okay, it's not sufficient that you place their pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. So we want the better answer and that would be the olfactory epithelium. So it's a pseudostratified because there's multi-layered cells. There are several cells present. Uh, what are they? We have the olfactory receptor cells. So these are the cells that are actually bipolar neurons like this one. Okay, They possess uh, non-motile cilia uh, and uh, they are supported by sustentacular cells, which are the ones that are most numerous. And they are also called the supporting cells. They are similar to the neuroglia uh, found in the nervous system. And they serve to provide mechanical and metabolic support. And they would also secrete uh, the an odorant binding protein or OBP. We also have the basal cells, which are which would serve as the progenitor cells. And we also have some brush, uh, brush cells at the surface, which would be used for transduction of general sensation and they would communicate with the trigeminal nerve. Okay, What are the other uh, structures that we would see in the olfactory uh, region? Here you can see the presence of these glands which we would call as the olfactory glands or Bowman's glands and they are branched tubulo alveolar glands. And sometimes you would see lipofuscin uh, granules, which are yellow brown, but uh, I cannot appreciate them in this particular slide. <clears throat> there are also nerve structures like this one, this one. Uh, these are what we call as the fila olfactoria. Okay, so next we go to the larynx. So the larynx is our voice box okay so the larynx would uh, be, be would contain the glottis and the glottis is composed of this area this portion and this portion this is the, the glottis would be composed of the two folds uh, the two vocal folds. This is the true vocal cord, uh, true vocal fold or uh, the vocal cord. And then you have here the other fold, which is called the false uh, vocal cord or the ventricular fold. And the recess or the space in between them would be called the ventricle. Okay. So the lining epithelium of uh, the vocal cord would be stratified squamous epithelium. Okay, so this it's lined by stratified squamous epithelium. Uh, underneath, uh, adjacent to the lamina propria, you have here the dense regular connective tissue, which would be the vocal vocal ligament. And then we have uh, a cartilage here, okay, which uh, would be the hyaline cartilage. 
On another area of the larynx, you see the lining epithelium to be different. This would be a this would be a pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. So notice the presence of the cilia. And on this particular area, you would see the transition to become a, squam a squamous epithelium. On the lower portion, you can see the presence of those mucous glands. We have here the vocalis muscle, which is a form of uh, skeletal muscle. Okay. And then let's go to the false vocal cord here. So uh, there's simply a, a ridge over this portion, okay? And this, uh, another cartilage would be present and guess what type of cartilage would this be? Okay, what can you see? The presence of fibers, okay? So you can see the presence of fibers. So this would now be So this would now be elastic fiber, uh, elastic cartilage, sorry, elastic cartilage, okay. So next we go to the trachea. So the trachea is a, uh, it's a tube or a tube and it uh, serves as a bridge between the larynx to the bronchus. So the trachea would be lined by pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. Okay, so you have the cilia, you also have the mucous cells or the goblet cells. Uh, it's very difficult to identify the other cells. You have the brush cells that would contain a blunt microvilli on the surface. You also have Kulchitsky uh, cells, which are enteroendocrine cells, and they are able to secrete uh, varying, uh, var varying uh, types of, of uh, secretions like catecholamines to serotonin to bombesin and calcitonin. And then we have the basal cells, okay, which is very easy to identify. We just point it. Uh, point out the lowest most lowest uh, layer and that would be the basal basal cells underneath you have the lamina propria which would be composed of loose connective tissue you have here the uh, the mucus acini go to the Lower mag a higher mag uh, lower magnification. You have the presence of the submucosal portion. This would be the cartilage plate, which uh, in the book they would say that this uh, would be a C-shaped cartilage plate consisting of hyaline cartilage. Uh, take note in this particular slide we have uh, the presence of uh, thyroid tissue. So you have the colloid within the lumen of the thyroid follicles. Okay. Ah, by the way, there's also a form of muscle present okay, here in this layer. This layer, this is the tracheolis muscle there. In this particular area, it's thin, but this is the tracheolis muscle. And then we go to the bronchiole, uh, the bronchi. Uh, actually, the slide here is labeled as bronchiole, but we can see the bronchi. So uh, we would be able to differentiate the two. Okay. So what's it, what is a bronchus and what's a bronchiole? Okay. So for the bronchus, 
the lining epithelium would be the same as that of the trachea. And it is pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. Okay. And uh, we also have the muscularis here. Okay, so you have here the muscularis there. You have here the submucosa. And then you have the cartilage. And then the last portion would be the adventitia. Okay. Also a feature for the, uh, for the bronchus would be the presence of glands. Okay. So you have here the glands which is found in the submucosa, as, and then we have the cartilage consisting of the hyaline cartilage. You can see a lot of those goblet cells uh, in this particular area, okay? So these are the, this would be the uh, bronchus. So let's now hunt for a bronchiole. Okay. So the one beside it, Let's try to see if this is a bronchus, uh, a bronchus also, or a bronchiole. So what are the features that will help us differentiate one from the other? Would it be the lining epithelium? There. So the lining epithelium here would be pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. Uh, what are they? This one. This would be the mucus asinae. We do not have the cartilage. So would this be a bronchiole? Okay, so this is still a bronchus. It, uh, you can see the presence of those glands and there might be some fragments of the cartilage but it's not present here. Okay, let's try to look for another, another one. So is this a bronchiole? Okay, so this would still be a bronchiole because of the presence of those glands beside it. Okay, you have the pseudostratified columnar ciliated epithelium. Let's try look for another one. This one, of course, it has one. Uh, this one. Okay. So this one doesn't have the gland. This is, okay. So it has a lining epithelium, okay, which is simple columnar to cuboidal. So no cartilage and no glands. So this is an example of a bronchiole. Okay. So the size of the bronchiole would be around one millimeter or less. It doesn't have cartilage, it doesn't have the glands, which would be found in the submucosa. Okay. So there are cuboidal cells that would be present. Okay, so there are cuboidal cells like this that would be present in the bronchiole. And they're called the clara cells. The clara cells would secrete a surface active agent, okay, and CC16, and they will help uh, in the tension, okay, uh, and the clearance of, uh, of debris, okay, uh, found within this area. Okay. So this would already be the respiratory bronchioles. Let's try to look for uh, the, the respiratory bronchial that would that would then go out into, or that would, uh, uh, that would be connected to an alveolar duct, okay. So this is an example of uh, a, a respiratory bronchiole. So you can see the presence of 
those cuboidal cells. Okay. And then this would be the last portion there. And it goes out into this space, which is the alveolar duct. Let's go to the lower magnification. So this would be the area. Okay, it goes out into this area. And then from the alveolar duct, going to the alveolar sac, opens up into the alveoli. Okay. So the alveoli now would be the smallest unit okay, found in the respiratory system. And uh, it is composed or it would be composed of the alveolar space over here. And then you have a thin connective tissue here, which we would call as the alveolar septa or alveolar wall. And the alveolar septa or alveolar wall would be composed of the type 1 and type 2 uh, cells, alveolar cells. The type 1 is squamous. It's, uh, it's like this one. Okay, and it's 40%, uh, compo uh, it composes 40% of the entire alveolar septa. Whereas for the 60%, we have the type 2, like this one. So these are what we call as the type 2 alveolar cells. They are cuboidal cells. They are very important as they would release or secrete surfactant to decrease the alveolar surface tension. Uh, there's another slide labeled lung. <clears throat> so it's similar to that of the bronchiole in the sense that we would see the uh, presence of, here you would see the bronchiole there. Uh, it would be lined by, I think simple, simple columnar epithelium absence of so you have i think it's simple cuboidal already okay and uh, absence of glands absence of the cartilage so let's try to look for a respiratory okay here i think i saw one so I think this is uh, this is uh, a bronchiole that ends up in this portion. Let's look at the appearance of the bronchiole. There you can see the presence of the clara cells, okay, the cuboidal cells, and it enters into the alveolar duct. You have here the alveolar uh, alveolar space and other alveolar spaces. And you have the uh, type 2 and type 1 cells present. Okay, so those are the slides that we have for this session. So I hope that you learned something. Stay safe and good day.